saying what I think uh, your comfort zone is. It's a situation in which you feel comfortable and you do not have to do anything new or anything difficult. So you're not particularly challenged. The world is exactly as you want to. But of course, that's not necessarily true because circumstances outside your control make the world what it is. Comfort zone is a sense that you are in control of your environment. You are either the master of the, or the mistress of your own domain. <clears throat> With this feeling you are not experience any levels of anxiety or levels of stress. You are sufficiently fed, sufficiently loved, and you have time that time is not of the essence. Such is a sense of being in your comfort zone from what I can, how I see it. The world is a good place. Everything with me is fine. Have I not commanded you, be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged. For the Lord your God will be with you wherever you go. This is a text from Joshua where we are told to have courage, where we are told that the divine will be with you wherever you go. And in the reading I shared with you earlier on, that if you're fearful, then it may be that you're not living within God's love. But to follow these words and step outside your comfort zone, it's not a simple decision. It can unsettle you. Change how you feel about yourself. And we all know from our own lives, our own life, our own particular circumstances, that at times, we are forced to step outside our comfort zone. And it's not because you want to, it's not your choice. It's because of certain circumstances that you are confronted with, such as an unexpected illness, a visit to the doctor that sends you on a spiral of change that you never imagined, which continues in a process of doctors and hospitals, and now you are completely out of your comfort zone. Recently I was visiting an elderly woman in hospital, and she said to me with tears in her eyes, all I want is to be home in my own house. I know what you meant. The hospital was a strange place. Wasn't her environment. She was out of her comfort zone. Or a death in your family can completely change your perception of how you live or how you're going to live and completely change what was your perceived comfort zone? It is not your choice, but it's impressed upon you by circumstances beyond your control. And it can bring with it devastation on your own sense of being. And there are all circumstances where you're forced outside your comfort zone. not by your volition, but by other things happening around you. Do your best 
to present yourself to God as one approved, a worker who has no need to be ashamed, rightly handling the word of truth. This is what we're called upon to do in 2 Timothy, because you're handling the word of truth, which can push you outside your comfort zone. This, of course, can be individually interpreted, depending on the ears that are hearing these words, scriptural words. One person's comfort zone may not be another person's comfort zone. They may differ quite radically, so I'm being a little bit generic here. Indeed, the overwhelming majority of you sitting here, in a way, have left your comfort zone to come to somewhere a church that you weren't necessarily born into, but where you now feel there is a new paradigm, a new sense of worship. What I know when I talk to people, it's not the easiest thing to walk through the door of all souls. Because you're challenging yourself. You're challenging how other people see you. It might be easier if you stay where you were, in the church of your birth, of your tribe, where you at least feel, I may not believe in what I'm comfortable with here. But there are times, like I've just mentioned, in coming here, when you intentionally step outside your comfort zone and in doing so you challenge yourself and this may not necessarily be in response to some sacred text it may be to something within yourself other than that but your own sense of worth your own sense of personal value pushes you to believe something is the right thing to do. And you step outside your comfort zone to do it. Putting yourself at times, possibly, in harm's way. This is not a case of having to do because you wish to change something. But it's forcing yourself to live outside a different context from the way you did live. And when you step outside your comfort zone, the most amazing thing is you learn new things. You see your surroundings in a different way. And you can never go back. You can never go back. Once you open your mind, you can't actually close it again. I believe that. Maybe that's one of the things I don't actually fully know, but I do believe in that. Once you open your mind, you cannot close it down again. No matter how much you feel outside your comfort zone. But it will also change you. It will change how you think about yourself. You might even see yourself in a different way, not necessarily as a different person, because you are who you are, but see yourself in a different light. Not unlike what Trish was saying when she went looking for herself. It may, it may separate you from it may separate you from others when you step outside your comfort zone and when you speak your own truth to others. It may bring great silences from people you thought were your friends, even members of your own family. But you still know it's the right thing to do. 
I have a certain regard for people who take these risks. And we have many in this church. I'm not going to mention them all by name, that would be unfair. But I know people in this church who privately and otherwise have done things which were a real challenge to themselves and put themselves at times in the front line of disagreement to try and speak their truth. Because, as I said, coming here may have been a decision to step outside your comfort zone. But I hope now you feel you're in a safe space, a sacred space that you can share with others. But I also want to mention, just in passing, as I finish up, I just want to mention some people in the political world, and I'm not, I'm, I'm not being selective, just some that I think recently stepped outside their comfort zone in order to try and present a full picture of what they saw was happening around them. Particularly in the light of what happened in the recent weeks and is still happening in some cases. What we see with uh, um, attacks on people because they are different from us, they come from other lands. And whatever reason, these people are being attacked and vilified. And then we see that some of it seems to be caused by the very thing I was talking about, fear in certain communities. Fear of being forced outside their comfort zone, having to live in a different way. So I just want to briefly mention a few things that happened that impressed upon me. Our local MP, Claire Hannah, spoke a couple of weeks ago on the platform, rightly condemning the recent riots in Belfast. But then Claire went one step further. Claire, this week, took herself to Sandy Row and met with the people in Sandy Row and spoke to the people in Sandy Row and Johnny Row and listened to their fears and listened to their problems. Well done, Claire. Maliki O'Hara the leader of the Green Party, Maliki is a gay activist, well known in Belfast. He only spoke of a platform against racism, but he didn't leave it that. Maliki, the following day, travelled to Schoenberg House, the Museum of the Orange Army, and appeared on social media with Mervyn Gibson, Grand Secretary of the Iron Job. And Maliki said, it's important that I do this if I'm serious about listening to everybody, meeting everybody. And there are two people that have stepped out there outside their comfort zone because they will, some of their own people, will not be pleased with them doing that. And my son is about we're talking about this. Who are the people that we've known in the past who may have made that effort as well? And I was listening to Sally Douglas, who's the High Sheriff of Belfast, talking about people he knew. And he mentioned, and this surprised me, and I would totally agree with him. Sally mentioned Martin Omarlon. And right enough, I'm most certainly not a ship principal. But Martin came and spoke here. And when Martin was Lord Mayor of Belfast, he consistently moved outside his comfort zone. He even went up to Shankill Road and had to run for cover. Well, that was the nature of Martin. And my sentence of God ever talked about that. What a brave guy he was. And Sammy Douglas said he was probably one of the best Lord Mayors we ever had in Belfast because he was never afraid 
to go everywhere in this city when he was not there. Doug Beatty tried to do the same in some ways, but unfortunately some people have disagreed with But my admiration for Doug is still there as somebody who tried to force people to step outside their comfort zone. Now there are many more. As a matter of fact, Sammy and Douglas would like it if I said Sammy is one himself, because I work with Sammy and I know the places Sammy has gone to talk and listen to people. So I just want to mention that, giving you a, an image of politicians who have stepped outside their comfort zone. And as I said, there are many more. The time early in Foster crossed the border to County Cali to go to a GAA game on a Sunday, on a Sunday, and she stood for a run of being the Irish Channel. And that was Ireland's way of stepping out of her comfort zone. And I think we should respect people, because it's not easy when you come from one of the two major traditions here to step outside your political comfort zone. And those people I've mentioned have done it. And it doesn't always make you popular with your own self. And that's why I think people who've come here, I think of the recent Pride service, which was led by Anton Deck, Alan and Alistair. And the church was picking it. That's not a very comfortable place to be, but how people were stepping outside their comfort zone. And you may not know this when you do it. You may not know this when you do it. But others will know this when you do it. They might not say it to you. I remember one time I said to my sister, Gary, did my mother ever think I did anything good? And my sister said, yeah, but she's not going to tell you. And she's not going to tell you, but she'd tell all the members of the family. Oh, but he did that was great. But she'll never tell you. And that was the nature of my mother. She was a better pastor. I won't apologize for her. And so others might not tell you. Mothers might not say it to you. But you may have moved outside your own comfort zone clearly to indicate whose side you were on. And remember, remember as in the reading I read and the prayers, do not be fearful when you do. Because remember, your God will be with you, holding your hand wherever you are.